This is like a silent movie. There's the cue card. This is my paper creaser. I crease from the middle. Both sides. good crease. When you crease really well, you get a really good sharp crease. After one comes two. One, two. With your eyeballs you see if they're equal, that they're the same. That's pretty good. not the same. We move it around until it is the same. Aha. Pretty good. One, two, three. Even, flush, points are lined up. And then I'm ready to crease them. A shortcut. You're gonna fold a bunch of these and you eyeball the first one or the second one or the third one. You get one that's really good. You could use it as a template. Trust your template. Trust what you see. Template is just a guide. Okay, exactly the same. Check out what you have. What are your shapes? How many of them are there? Are they all the same? All around it. This is half of a sphere. 
half of a ball. We know that's the center of each circle, so there's the center of the ball. So if this is one half, I make another half. Now I have two halves. Now, I'm not lined up the same there. Still works, but I'm just gonna line them up the same. All right. touch the centers of the circles all together. And there's the same pattern as that. We'll connect them the same way. You notice the points are touching and the edges are lining up. equilibrium sphere where every point on the surface of the sphere is equidistant from each other as well as from the center. All right, using same fold, you fold it in half and in thirds. All right, here it is, in half and in thirds. There's some more folding to do. Well, there's a lot, unlimited folding. I'm going to mark these so you can see it better on this video. You'll see three diameters. That's what you see on your circle if you folded it in half and folded it in thirds. I am drawing dotted lines on these creases so that you can better see. So every time an edge intersects with another edge, you get a point. So not only do we have a center point now, we have six points on the edge of our circle. Pick every other point, start with one point, and touch it to the center point just almost there. You don't want to cover them up, just touch them. And you'll see that this crease is still lined up with itself. Now, every other point means skip that one and go to this one. possible. These points will be sharp and crisp. There won't be any overlaps like that one. That one's not right. Not right. It's just not accurate. It can be right, but it's not accurate. Let's see. So I just move the point back a little bit. You'll find that if you use a paper circle that's not a paper plate, it will behave a little differently. 
because it won't have these little undulations. But you just be as accurate as you can with the circle that you have, material that it's made from. So now I have more creases and more points. Because remember, every time a crease intersects, you have a new point. I'm gonna crease these now. my creasing stick after I know that everything is lined up and even. So I have a whole new set of creases and new points. So you look at your circle as you're folding it to identify the points. It won't help you much looking at this one. I'm gonna go to these points. You could choose any set of points, but we are doing this specific one. Each triangular tip here is going to the opposite edge of the triangle, right there. Look at that, there's my new crease. A new point right there. All right, I'm going to go around to the next one. Consistency. There to there. Again, I'm drawing these lines so that you can see the creases better on this video. You don't need to in order to do this. Just look at your, your creases. We'll begin to see how things are lining up here. I'm not randomly drawing, I'm just dotting the creases that are here that I've been building. Oh, there's some there too. There's one right here. All right. Notice and observe what you see. How many triangles, big ones, small ones, equilateral. There's a lot going on here. I'm gonna go back to this original, our first big triangle, right there. I'm, I'm gonna overlap them like this like that, but you don't have to. I just have started to get in the habit of that. It'll still work, whether you do or don't. So here's creases. Uh-huh, it wants to move that way. And start playing around with it. There's all kinds of stuff, this this net. This, it's called a net, the, crease, the creases in here are a net. All, all kinds of ways it will move. For purposes of this demonstration, touch the three points of the triangle together. And 
There's many ways to connect those points. I'm gonna use tape. A couple things about tape. I like to use masking tape and I like to go along the edge like that. And it folds around, makes a nice crisp edge there. Hot tip number one, tape works best when you apply friction. less tape and you go along the length like that. And it covers more distance than a piece of tape going the other way. This is where we're going parallel along the edge tape. All right, equilateral tetrahedron. Now, here are two of what we folded into our equilateral tetrahedron. Here, we taped it together. Here, they're open. We can connect these two together with tape. Remember, we're connecting points and edges. We'll fit together. Let's tape this up. The same way. Here's a great way of applying friction to tape when it's flat, but that's the only flat one I'm going to do here. Yeah, there we go. of things that does. It's always, always helpful to see what else is going on along the way. I'm showing you how to make an octahedron with these two folded circles. But there's a lot of things to explore along the way. So if you counted those triangles in the folded circles or in the tetrahedron, got one, two, three, four. So there's four sides. So if we have two circles here and four sides, four triangles in each of those two circles, then how many surfaces or sides, faces, does this polyhedra 
octagon have? Well, it's called an octagon for a reason. tetrahedron and your octahedron all have a little relationship with each other. You could make one for each space. You could make eight of these and put them on all of the surfaces of the octahedron and tape them on. You could make four more tetrahedrons and stellate every surface of the one in the middle and on and on and on. You could connect them in all kinds of ways. Thinking about point, there's a point here and a point here, point there. There's another way to connect them. Explore, have fun, yay!